Dijkstra's algorithm is one of the most useful and influential ideas in computer science, like compression, blockchain, or maybe even commenting your code. One day. The reason why Dijkstra's is so well regarded as awesome is that it solves a very common, very useful problem. Which is this. Say you have a graph, a bunch of nodes with edges between them. How do we quickly find the lowest cost path between any two nodes? It turns out, with some creativity, answering a lot of bigger, more practical problems literally just comes down to solving this. Like, for example, what's the fastest way to drive between two locations, which genes make the most related proteins, and even for all you snakes, how do you make money by exploiting the market? Because it's so useful, Dijkstra's is often covered in classes and interviews, so it's very good to know. But even above that, getting an intuition for how and why it works will help you become a better problem solver in general. So in this video, I'm here to cover three things about Dijkstra's. Why do we need it? How does it work? And finally, how can we improve it? So first, let's recap what we want to do. To have an actual example, let's say you want to uh, drive from LA to Canada, and you really want to get there fast for uh, reasons. Everything you know is here in this graph. Nodes are locations, edge costs are travel times and hours, and we want our computer to quickly find the fastest path between nodes A and C. Okay, so what can we do? Always go north? Doesn't work. Keep picking smallest numbers? Doesn't work. Uh, okay. So what if we just find every possible path between A and C and take the shortest one? This literally can't fail, but it is insanely inefficient. But this is actually not a bad start. Whenever we have a slow solution that works, we should always ask ourselves, can we make it faster? So here's a thought. To trim down how much we have to search through, when we're building up the paths, let's see if there's any early red flags that immediately tell us that our path is bad. Okay, let's say that we're building segments of paths that are candidates to maybe eventually become the best A to C path. And I nominate A to B, and I say, Tom, yeah, this looks promising. But actually, you can already tell that I'm wrong. Because, hey, wait a minute, A, B isn't even the fastest way to B. This way is just straight up faster by four hours. You might argue, fill in the rest of the path to C with whatever you want. I'll replace AB with AGB, and my path is always just faster than yours, by 4 hours. So any path to C starting with AB can't possibly be the fastest one, and this is why we don't let fluffy camels do math. And you would be right. The same argument applies to every part of any candidate path. We should only explore further down if we're sure it's locally optimal which means there's no faster path to get from where the start is to where we're at so far. But finding paths that are locally the fastest all the time seems pretty hard. Or does it? Even looking at just the start zone, we're already sure of the fastest path from A to one other node. And that's A to D, because it's got the lowest cost edge. We see that any path from A to D that's not this one, must first go through one of these other edges, which makes them already slower. So this one has to be the fastest. And that's pretty much the key idea behind Dijkstra's. So to keep track of all the paths we're currently building off of, let's have a list of explored paths. And to keep track of the nodes that we can maybe add onto them, we'll have the frontier, uh, in spirit of the great American West. So again, A to D has good potential to eventually become the very best, so we explore it. This unlocks new paths, some to old nodes, some to new ones, so we update our frontier. So we always want our frontier to tell us how to get from A to any node we haven't explored yet that's accessible through the paths we've built so far. So now that we've updated, can we find the fastest path from A to another node? Yeah, so it's G. Using the exact same logic as before, any other path to G has to go through one of these, so it's already slower. In every step, we build off of the locally best paths we have so far to find the locally best path to something new. And since we have a limited number of nodes, if we just keep going, we'll eventually find C in the explore list, and that has to be the fastest way from A to C, and we're done. Notice that when we found a possible path to the end, but it's not the fastest, we never have to worry about wrongly picking it. Since every stage of the real fastest path must have a lower cost than the final cost of this wrong path, 
we're guaranteed to find all of it first. Hooray! And if you want to code all of this up, here's pretty much all it is. This code just does what we just described earlier. At every stop, we explore whatever in our frontier is fastest to get to from A, we check if we're done, and if we're not, we update our new frontier. Explore, update, and repeat until victory. That's all Dijkstra's is, and it does run pretty quickly. But keep in mind, Dijkstra's only works if none of your edge costs are negative. For example, here, Dijkstra's will tell us that the fastest path is still this way, and it'll take you 14 hours, when in reality, you can just cycle around here for a while, and then arrive in Canada at the beginning of time. Lastly, if you do any AI, you might also hear Dijkstra's be called a UCS, or Uniform Cost Search. It's pretty much the same thing. Of course, this is not to be confused with USC, which also finds the shortest path, but only if you're looking for an admission scandal. So Dijkstra's is pretty good, but is there a way to be even faster? It seems like if I want to eventually go north from LA, we probably shouldn't be gallivanting around Mexico. If only we can somehow relay this to the algorithm. In part 2 of this tutorial, I'll cover a star search, which lets you combine some of the computer sorcery we just learned here with your great human intuitions to find fastest paths super quickly. To learn more, you can click the link here or in the description below. Anyways, I hope this video helped, and as always, have an awesome day, and don't be a stranger!